gender equality bill uh, has now been gazetted and that means it's been officially published uh, by the government as something that's going to be discussed by the Legislative Assembly. Um, it's been something that's been under discussion for a number of years. It was first published uh, for discussion purposes back in 2009 uh, but it's recently been resurrected and it's now something that's likely to be considered by the Legislative Assembly in the near future uh, and potentially become law within the next few months. It's something that I think the government have had um, under discussion for a number of uh, for, for a number of years. Um, it touches on a, on a number of different areas. It touches on um, obviously women's rights. It also just simply touches upon employment uh, and generally the employee uh, employee relationship. So I think it's across a number of um, government departments, albeit that the title might imply that it's uh, only to do with gender. In fact, it covers quite a lot more than that, and it's not simply about men and women. It's about a lot of uh, other. Um, different characteristics. It, it, for example, it prohibits discrimination on the grounds of marital status, uh, prohibits sexual discrimination, um, but it also prohibits sexual harassment. And so we're really talking about a, a substantially wider bit of legislation than the title might suggest. A number of these things have been illegal for quite some time. The labour law contains uh, a prohibition on discrimination on various grounds, things such as discrimination on grounds of sex. Um, but um, in that law, it's simply a criminal offence. So if someone was to discriminate in that way, they'd be liable to prosecution uh, and potentially penalties. But that was it. Um, what this new law does, it substantially increases the scope. Uh, of the protection available. So now an employee has a freestanding right to make a complaint saying that they ha have been discriminated against in one of the defined ways. Uh, to go to uh, a discrimination tribunal and potentially uh, recover compensation uh, and in fact directions to their employer to take action to address that discrimination. In terms of employers, um, hopefully most responsible employers will have very little to fear from the bill. The likelihood is that uh, most of what's prohibited is going to be covered by existing policies and procedures because uh, we'd like to think that most employers don't discriminate on the grounds contained in the bill uh, at the present time. Nevertheless, what's going to be necessary is a wide-ranging review of all stages of the employment process, uh, recruitment, employment, remuneration, even dismissal, um, just to make sure uh, that the process that's followed doesn't inadvertently discriminate on any of those grounds because obviously if it does uh, the potential for a complaint exists. Um, in terms of an employee um, the key feature here is to know that they now have additional rights uh, if an employee feels that they have been discriminated against in one of uh, the, the ways that are covered. It's that now open to them to make a complaint. They don't simply have to rely uh, upon prosecution taking place. They can go to the tribunal and say, I've got a problem in this respect, and ask them to determine uh, whether or not that has any basis. The Gender Equality Tribunal that's proposed, uh, it's a tribunal uh, of uh, five members, one of whom will be an attorney, the other uh, four will be people who are experienced in the sort of issues dealt with by the tribunal. Um, it exists to hear complaints under the law and that, uh, as I've said, can be a wide range of different complaints. It can be complaints about sexual harassment, it can be complaints about uh, sex discrimination, it can be complaints about whether or not uh, the pay that's being awarded uh, is equal um, to men and women. Um, and what that tribunal can do, it's got wide-ranging powers, it's effectively a, almost a court. It, it can compel the production of documents by employers and employees, it can compel witnesses to come along and actually give evidence to the tribunal, and ultimately, um, having made a decision, it's got wide-ranging powers to remedy uh, potential breaches. Um, it can award compensation of up to $20,000, uh, it can make directions to employers requiring them to take action uh, to remedy what's taken place. And those directions, uh, if they're not complied with, that will be a criminal offence uh, and can potentially result in serious consequences uh, for those people uh, choosing to ignore the direction. Once the bill's been passed, um, it will simply be published um, as a passed law. Um, that law will specify a commencement date. It's likely there'll be um, some time lag between it being passed and coming into force, simply because it'll be necessary to take the administrative steps in order to set up uh, the Gender Equality Tribunal. Um, but I think we can expect, certainly with a, a law of this importance and, and the sort of rights it's granting, uh, that uh, in the event that it is passed, uh, it will probably come into force uh, within the foreseeable future. 
this is a uh, bill which has got potential ramifications for all employers in the Cayman Islands, anyone with any staff, and not in fact just them, uh, anybody offering qualifications, uh, any vocational training organisations, any professional partnerships, all of those bodies are within the scope of the law and therefore are going to need to take a long hard look at it uh, in order to make sure that they comply. Um, given uh, that we now know or at least suspect that the law is going to be passed in relatively unamended form in the fairly near future, uh, we'd recommend uh, that advice is sought uh, prior to it coming into force to make sure that employers are forewarned and forearmed uh, so that when it does uh, finally um, come onto the statute book, uh, all of their procedures uh, are in place. Uh, here at Walkers we have an employment group, we specialise in advising uh, on matters such as the gender discrimination law as well as the labour law uh, and general issues relating to employment law uh, and uh, hopefully we will be in a good position to assist uh, in the event that anyone does have any inquiries in this respect.